All right, let's do this. Oh, this is still Windows 11. Well, in that case, today we're going to talk about all the things that I think suck in Windows 11. Stay tuned. All right, Microsoft, I would take notes if I were you. Do you hate Windows 11 or do you love it? Well, I've had enough time to play around with Windows 11 to be able to decide the things that I like and the things that I don't like in it. And I thought it would be a great idea to put together a video showcasing all of these things. Unfortunately, this is not going to be that video. This video is all about what I hate about Windows 11. And next week, we'll do a video about the things that I like about it. But for this video, if you love to hate on Microsoft's new Windows 11, then you're going to like this video. Let's get into it. The first thing that we need to talk about in a video hating on Windows 11 is their hardware requirements. Now, obviously, you have the basic requirements, which I completely agree with. You need a dual core processor, four gigs of RAM, which honestly, please don't run Windows 11 with four gigs of RAM or Windows 10 for that matter. Run eight gigs or higher and you'll be much happier. But either way, those kind of hardware requirements, you know, disk space, things of that nature are completely understandable. What isn't understandable is the arbitrary requirements, the ones that just don't make sense, like an EUFI BIOS, TPM 2.0, and kind of a ridiculous cutoff of supported CPUs. Windows 11 only supports second generation Ryzen or higher or eighth generation Intel and higher. Now, this is ridiculous. These are CPUs that are only a couple of years old and there's no reason to limit CPUs beyond that. I know for a fact that a third or fourth generation Intel processor will run Windows 11 just fine. So why cut them off? Microsoft claims that these arbitrary hardware requirements are for security, but that doesn't even make sense because you require an EUFI BIOS, but you don't require Secure Boot to be enabled. So that's not a security requirement. If you're not going to require Secure Boot, then you shouldn't require EUFI. It doesn't make any sense. And the CPU support, it's just downright ridiculous. Like an i7-7700 won't work in Windows 11. Why? It doesn't make any sense. The only reason that I can come up with that Microsoft would require these arbitrary standards are to help increase third-party retail sales of their different partners' computers like Dell and HP and companies like that because there's no other legitimate reason why they would have these hardware requirements in Windows 11. This is the worst time that Microsoft could pull something like this with the price of hardware being so high and availability being so bleak right now, we don't need a requirement like this for older systems. I think everyone needs to call Microsoft out for this. We need to complain about this because if this becomes the norm, you're never going to be able to upgrade a computer to the new version of Windows. You're simply going to have to buy a new computer. And I'm sorry, these things are not disposable. Now, the next complaint I have with Windows 11 is setting your default browser. The, you know, I'm just going to have to show you this one so you'd understand it. Let me show you on the computer. Okay, get a load of this, all right? If you have another browser installed, like in this instance, Chrome, we're going to go ahead and open that up. And if it's not set as our default browser, we got to go ahead, click the button, and we come into this section right here. Okay, so we've got to scroll down. We've got to look for Google Chrome. There we go. And then as you can see, all Windows Edge is set as the default for all of these things. So what we have to do in order to change the default, we've got to go down here. We've got to go switch anyway, Google Chrome. Okay. Then kind of go down the list and every single one of these needs to be individually set to Google Chrome if we want to change Google Chrome as our default browser. So there we go. We finally set everything down to Google Chrome. That is ridiculous, but that's not the reason why I hate this. Let me show you why I hate it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up Edge here. And once we open up Edge, oh, it asks us, do you want to use Microsoft's recommended browser setting? Oh, let's check it out. Go ahead and hit yes. Apply setting. Done. 
That's ridiculous. So in Chrome, it takes me several minutes to go through and change several settings in order to change my default browser. But in Edge, I can do it immediately? No, come on, that's ridiculous, Microsoft, and you know it. The next thing that I hate about Windows 11 is Microsoft's requirement to have a Microsoft account with the home version of Windows 11. Now with Pro, you can use a local account and that's fine. And the fact that you make a Microsoft account an option, okay, that's fine too. But to require me to have a Microsoft account for the home version, no, I'm not gonna do it. In fact, not only am I not gonna do it, but I made a video showing how to get around it, and I'll go ahead and tag that video right here. But either way, it's insane, Microsoft, and the only reason you're doing it is to try to get people signed up for Microsoft accounts so you can spy on them easier. The next thing that I hate about Windows 11 is the Windows 11 taskbar, and it's not all bad, however, it's the lack of personalization that they give you with the taskbar. For instance, you cannot move or resize the taskbar. In Windows 10, you could move the taskbar from the bottom or to the sides or to the top, and it was really easy. And you could also change the size of the icons so you could either have smaller icons or larger icons. Unfortunately, all those settings have been taken away in the Windows 11 taskbar. And on top of that, you can't even ungroup icons anymore. So if you were to open multiple copies of say Google Chrome, they all combine themselves into a single icon on the taskbar. And in Windows 10, you could actually break those out so they'd each have their own location on your taskbar. Well, not anymore. Windows 11 decided you don't need that feature, so they took it away. However, luckily, with a little program called Explorer Patcher, you can fix a lot of that stuff. And I covered that in another video recently where I show how to customize the start menu in Windows 11. And I'll go ahead and tag that video right here so you can check it out, so you can solve that problem amongst the next issue that I have with Windows 11, which is the start menu itself. You know, I actually kind of like the Windows 11 start menu, but at the same time, I kind of hate it too. The problem is, is that Microsoft tried to simplify it and I think they went too far with the simplification. And there's a few issues that I have. You know what? It's best I show you. Let me show you on the computer here. Okay, so the first thing is, is when you look at the start menu itself, does it not just look like a smartphone interface? It essentially lines up all of your icons, which is fine, I guess, but then it just doesn't make use of space very well. And the other thing is, is if you look at the bottom, the recommended area, this is the part that I don't understand because right here, it has applications and documents that are recommended. And essentially this is more of a frequently used section of the start menu. However, here's the issue, is if I have a program that I frequently use, it's probably not gonna be here. It's gonna be up here pinned with the other icons, so I don't need it to be down here. And the other thing is, is what if I have a document that I don't want someone to read, like this super secret document right here? Well, if it's in the start menu, you can just open it up. Here's the thing. If you let someone else use your computer and you have some personal documents that you don't want anyone else to see, it's probably best not to advertise them in the start menu to make them easily accessible. But it's just me, I guess. And I get it, there is a way to eliminate this entire recommended section so it doesn't show up in Windows. However, when you do that, it doesn't shrink the size of the start menu or even replace the section with something else. It just makes it blank. I just don't think that Microsoft implemented the start menu in Windows 11 very well. I think they could have done a lot better and there's a lot of features from Windows 10 that they could have moved over to Windows 11. For instance, they could have kept the live tiles and used the live tiles down in the bottom section. You could have switched in between the recommended or live tiles depending on what you wanted. There could have been a lot more options that we would have been able to use as customization if Microsoft would have thought it through a little bit better. But maybe they have a reason for doing it the way that they did it. Obviously they do because they did it that way. The next thing that I hate about Windows 11 actually kind of bleeds into Windows 10 in some cases too. And that's why is it that every time Microsoft creates a new operating system, they make things harder. And what I'm talking about is the excessive clicks. Let me show you. 
Okay, for instance, let's say I want to connect to a wireless network. So we come down here, we click on our wireless icon, and there's no networks. We got to click again on this little arrow in order to show wireless networks. Why? Why add another click to our workflow in order to do something? And another example, let me show you. Okay, so if we come over here and we right click on the desktop, you can see we've got this context menu here. And if you want all of the features that are normally come in a context menu, you have to click show more options in order to get the old style menu. It's again another click and this happens all throughout Windows where you can still do the same thing that you were able to do in previous versions of Windows. It just requires several more clicks to do it. And that actually moves into the next complaint that I have with Windows 11 and that's with the Windows settings. And for somebody that has used Windows since Windows 3.1, we're used to the control panel. We've had the control panel for several decades and now Microsoft wants to move us over to a more touch-friendly interface with Windows settings. The problem is not everything is in settings. You can't do every task that you need to do from within Windows settings. Now granted Windows settings in Windows 11 is better than it was in Windows 10 so it has gotten an improvement. However you still need to go into the Windows control panel in order to do a lot of the things that Windows settings simply can't do and the things that it can do is simply unintuitive. This may just be my problem because I'm used to using the Windows control panel, but it's just not intuitive. It doesn't do the things that I want it to do the way I think it should be done. I like control panel and that's why it's nice that we still have control panel within Windows. However, Microsoft, you could at least give us a link to it somewhere. You, we shouldn't have to search for control panel every time we need it. And the next thing that I hate about Windows 11 is Microsoft, the bloatware is ridiculous. Come here, look at this. Okay, in the start menu here, we've got TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Disney Plus, Spotify, Prime Video, ClipChamp. What is ClipChamp? I mean, come on, why is all this there? Other than the fact that Microsoft's just padding their wallet by selling ad space on my start menu. You know, if you wanna do this in the Microsoft Store, Awesome, go for it. Do all the ads you want, but please leave them out of my start menu. And this doesn't even count the bloatware that's within Windows that you have to clean up to stop Microsoft from spying on you. This is just junk and it comes pre-installed with Windows. But Microsoft, I don't know if you're hurting for money and I, I, I don't know, but please stop advertising on my start menu. I'd really appreciate it. And another issue that I have with Windows 11, and this is one why I think a lot of people think Windows 11 sucks, is a lot of the bugs that it's had. Windows 11 has been plagued with bugs ever since release, and luckily Microsoft has been really quick on fixing these bugs, but they've actually caused a lot of problems for a lot of people. For instance, the performance bug with AMD processors that happened right at release. That's something that could have been solved in beta, and then there's been several other bugs within Windows 11 that's plaguing us until this day. Like for instance, let me show you one. Okay, so check this out. As you can see through this whole video, I've had my sound muted. Let me show you why. If I unmute it, you hear that sound? Yeah. It just keeps going. And I have no idea why. The way I typically solve this issue, oh man, let me mute it again real quick, hang on. The way I typically handle this issue isn't just muting the audio. What it is, is it's the sound effect when you insert a USB device. So I have to go into the sound settings and just take the audio file out so it doesn't play anything when I insert a USB device. I don't know where that issue is coming from, but it has persisted through multiple installs of Windows 11. So it's clearly a bug in Windows 11. And hopefully it'll be fixed one of these days, but not holding my breath because it's been there for quite a while. But if you're having the same issue and you found a way to solve it, please shoot me a message and let me know how because it drives me nuts. But either way, I hope this list 
was helpful to you, or maybe you just got a laugh out of it. And let me know in the comments below what things you hate about Windows 11. And stay tuned for next week because this isn't all gonna be hate. I'm gonna do another video where I tell you about all the things that I love about Windows 11 to kind of balance it out a little bit. But either way, if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Oh, and hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.